Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Sinister Dread Vaults podcast. Today, I have a spine-chilling tale to share with you. This is a personal account of one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had as a ghost hunter. We're diving deep into the bowels of an abandoned hospital, where the past's echoes still linger in the shadows. Buckle up, because this is going to be a haunting ride. The air was thick with dust and the unmistakable scent of decay as I stepped into the abandoned hospital. The walls, once pristine and white, were now covered in grime and graffiti. Broken windows let in slivers of moonlight, casting eerie shadows on the crumbling floors. Every footstep echoed through the empty hallways, amplifying the feeling of desolation. I could feel the history of the place pressing down on me, a heavy weight that seemed to whisper secrets from the past. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the occasional drip of water from the ceiling. It felt as though the hospital was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. As I moved deeper into the hospital, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. My flashlight flickered, casting dancing shadows that made my heart race. Then, I saw it. A figure, barely visible at the end of the hallway. It was a woman in a hospital gown, her eyes hollow and empty. She stood there, motionless, as if waiting for something. My breath caught in my throat, and a chill ran down my spine. This was it, my first ghostly encounter of the night. I tried to steady my breathing, telling myself it was just a trick of the light, but deep down, I knew I was not alone. I decided to investigate the operating rooms, hoping to find some answers. The smell of antiseptic still lingered, mixing with the metallic scent of old blood. The room was filled with outdated surgical equipment, covered in rust and cobwebs. As I approached the operating table, I heard a faint whisper. It was soft at first, but it grew louder, more insistent. It was a child's voice, calling for help. I spun around, but there was no one there. The temperature dropped suddenly and I could see my breath in the air. The whispers turned into cries, and I felt a cold hand brush against my arm. Panic set in, and I struggled to keep my composure. My flashlight beam landed on an old surgical light, now a grotesque spider web of shadows. The cries grew louder, more desperate, echoing off the tile walls and filling the room with an unbearable sadness. I felt a tightness in my chest, as if the pain and fear of countless patients had condensed into this one moment. The air grew heavy, and I found it hard to breathe, each gasp pulling in the lingering fear of the past. My next stop was the nursery. The sight of empty cribs and peeling pastel wallpaper was enough to send shivers down my spine. I could almost hear the faint sounds of lullabies and the soft cooing of babies. As I walked among the cribs, I felt a tug on my sleeve. I looked down to see a small, ghostly figure of a child. Her eyes were wide with fear, and she pointed to a dark corner of the room. I followed her gaze, and there, in the shadows, was a tall, shadowy figure. It moved with an unnatural grace, its eyes glowing with malevolence. I knew I had to leave, but my feet felt rooted to the spot. The child's presence was both heartbreaking and terrifying. She seemed so real, so desperate for help. The tall figure in the corner exuded a malevolent energy that sent every instinct screaming at me to run. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel cold sweat trickling down my back. I wanted to reach out to the child, to offer some comfort, but the shadowy figure loomed closer, its intent clear. I forced myself to move, dragging my feet away from the nursery and the chilling scene within. Just when I thought it couldn't get worse, I made my way to the basement. The air was damp and suffocating, and the walls were lined with old medical records and discarded equipment. As I explored the labyrinthine corridors, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread. Then, I heard it, a low, guttural growl. I turned to see a figure crouched in the corner, its eyes glowing in the darkness. It lunged at me, and I felt a cold, clammy hand wrap around my ankle. I screamed and kicked, trying to free myself. The grip tightened, and I could feel the energy being drained from my body. 
In a final desperate act, I swung my flashlight at the figure, and it disappeared into thin air. The basement was a maze of shadows and forgotten memories. Every step I took echoed with the sorrow and despair of those who had once walked these halls. The growl was unlike anything I had ever heard, a sound that seemed to vibrate through my very bones. The figure that lunged at me was a twisted mass of darkness, its eyes burning with an unnatural fire. As its hand gripped my ankle, I felt a cold so intense it was like being plunged into icy water. My vision blurred, and for a moment, I thought I might lose consciousness. Summoning every ounce of strength, I swung my flashlight, and the figure vanished, leaving me gasping for breath on the cold, damp floor. I stumbled out of the hospital, my heart pounding and my mind racing. The experience had left me shaken to my core. The encounters, the whispers, the ghostly figures, they were all too real. That night, I learned that some places are better left undisturbed. The abandoned hospital had revealed its dark secrets, and I knew I would never be the same. Thank you for joining me on this harrowing journey. If you have any ghostly encounters of your own, please share them in the comments or reach out on social media. Stay tuned for more tales of the supernatural, and remember, sometimes, the past is never truly gone. Until next time, stay curious and stay brave.